Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. We're back for part 160 today, fresh with more injury problems, all defensively this time rather than midfield. And we've got a chance to win my favourite trophy for the first time in four years. Three years in a row, Scottish opposition have won the SPFL Trust Trophy. And this year, against recently relegated Dunfermline, we got the chance to finally put that right. It's going to be difficult with a slightly depleted side though. We've also got a youth intake to look through, which is going to be exciting for the club and the nation, hopefully. So if you're looking forward to all of that, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily content from this series. Of course, tomorrow it's all back to European action. We've got a massive quarter final in the Europa League. You can see our opponents are Lazio from the top right of the screen. And that's going to be a defining moment for this club and this nation as we try and stay in that top 12 of the coefficient, which is proving difficult. Guarantee two other sides group stage football. And of course, try and break new ground ourselves and reach a semi-final for the first time. There's also links in the eye above to the Twitch channel where we're going to have regular live streams and football watch-alongs. And there's also a link to other playlists and the podcast too. And we're keeping a close eye on the league table because Barrytown United, this season's heroes in Europe, now six points behind Cardiff Met Uni with four games to go. We really need them to deliver. The only positive for Barry, if we look at the schedule, is they've already played their two games against us. Cardiff Met Uni and TNS both yet got to face us. So fingers crossed that'll be three points gained. If they can then beat Cardiff Met Uni and stay consistent, they should have done the job still and nick third. But TNS regained second, you'd expect as much with the investment. For us though, we've only played one game off camera. It's a big one as well, a 3-2 win against Cardiff Met Uni. They've run us so close here. Tom Jones equalised on a stroke of half time, then added a brilliant second in the 79th minute. Kane Walters got a third with a stunning free kick, but Cole Lacey, a former youngster, still nearly pegged us back. It was a very tough day at the office. Cardiff Met Uni, when they're at their best, are brilliant. But if they don't get into the top three again this year, can the other two nick some of their best players? That's what I'm looking at now. But it's a really good sign that we're able to compete with our reserve squad. We've got a big game today. And of course, for me, I love the SPFL Trust Trophy. But most of you are probably here to see our youth intake. So let's go back about a week when it arrived. And we'll have a look at the stars that have come through this season. So nothing really spectacular this year, particularly in terms of developing ourselves as a club. I don't think there's any player here that's going to make it in our squad. In fact, none of them had even three and a half star potential when it came through. DeRosa's has just gone up slightly. He's one star ability, three and a half potential as a number 10. Pretty similar to a Cole Lacey. Could he then go and improve another club in the league? That's what we're hoping for. The difference this year, though, is we have got a good seven or eight players who have already got one star ability and also a good seven or eight who have got between two and a half and three star potential. So if we can get a good five or six of them looking at the odds, there'll always be one or two duds. If we can get the majority of them playing for other clubs in this nation and developing well, we've probably done a good thing for Welsh football. So that's what our priority is going to be this year. Little mix of positions as well. We've got a couple of good fullbacks, lots of wide players, which we were warned about before. But also further down, more defensive options, a goalkeeper. So in terms of a club, it's been a little bit of a dud this year. But I still think we have a duty. We've got to be unselfish with this youth intake and try and take it to the next level. However... There is some positives on the youth side from the players that came through last year and their development. The first of them, Kean Bulkley, is now becoming a superstar. His finishing's already up to 10. We've put a lot of effort into his targeted development. So he's working as an advanced forward. He's working on shooting. It's working. He has been absolutely fabulous. And it's helped that he scored goals galore. But A. Tate just behind him, now promoted to the first team. Electric quick, becoming a decent finisher as well. I'm hopeful we might be able to get him out on loan at the end of the summer. He's made a couple of appearances for us, but he's now going to be 17 in the middle of August. Going to get him a new deal, a new contract, because we want to do it before it gets too expensive, quite frankly. And we just want to knock him down a little bit here, because we don't think he's going to make that much of an impact next season. So let's see if we can get his wages down. We'll be back in a moment, because there's some other youth players we've got to look at as well. Okay, so while we're here, we'll take a look at the development of a couple of others. Chief among which being Brett Jennings, who's now first choice with Whelan's injury. He's becoming a really good player. He's now three-star ability as a centre-half. Surely will get his Wales debut in the next international call-up. But also, his potential's going up as well, which given the fact the squad's improving, is pretty remarkable. So Brett Jennings is someone who I think 
maybe even by the end of next season, Jennings and Mubarak Whelan will be first choice and Matty Whitaker will be pushed back a bit. When you can see that we've offered new contracts to loads of players, so we've got loads tied down for four or five years. Whitaker is one of those, Nenov being another. We've also tied down Simancas for longer too, which we mentioned last episode. We've extended the loans of McDonald and Reyes again. But on McDonald's front, it will be his first year as a backup because if we look at Dimitar Nenov, he is coming on leaps and bounds. Three-star ability, five-star potential. He's got a fabulous record in the league this year. And even though he's only been a sub in Europe and has often had to play on the left, he's done very well for us. So he's someone that's training well. He's someone that's improving still. And I just think that for next season, I've got no excuse not to start him because with McDonald starting to decline at 29, I feel like there's not much between them, and Nenov probably deserves his shot. The other worry at the moment is Lloyd Goulden. He's the man who's not developing well at all. I was hoping after his injury he'd come back with a plum and we'd get one more good year out of him. Because I think by then, maybe Bulkley would be ready. But at the moment, doesn't look to be the case. So some real good signs on youth development. Players coming along really quickly. And we're not going to have to have much change around in the squad because the replacement players coming in are being risen through the academy. They're not players we're going to have to go and sign and pay big money for, which equally means we're able to keep this wage bill down, something I'm particularly proud of. But let's go and have a look at something a couple of you guys have requested. Obviously, we're now for the first time getting to the real latter stages of European competitions. And a few of you had asked a little bit more about what sides have been winning it in recent years. So let's start with the Champions League, just so you can see. The last few years, I mean, it's basically been England dominated with the odd PSG winning there. But we're not going to win the Champions League in this save. I think we're all aware of that. The Europa League is probably our best bet because we've not been in the Europa Conference much. And we might, we might have a route to the final here if we get lucky. Leon won it last year, but before that, it was different English sides for eight, eight years in a row. And then two of the four years before that as well. So it's very English dominated. And you'd imagine if we do get to the final, we're probably playing Arsenal or Inter. I'd guess Arsenal. And Arsenal would probably win it. They've got the player with the highest average rating. And he is absolutely world class. A French international superstar and on 300 grand a week. So that's why the English sides in the Europa League are probably just utterly dominant at the moment. They're so far above the rest of the standard. I mean, you saw it when we had the last 16 curse. We went out to Newcastle, Norwich. Was it West Ham one year as well? All sorts of sides that we're unable to compete with. And that's the biggest hurdle in this competition. Can the English side get knocked out before the final? Or can we produce a massive shock against them? They're the things that look unlikely at the minute. The Europa Conference, to be fair, still dominated largely by English sides. Three of the last seven years, only Stuttgart and Aberdeen of Scotland have managed to break that. And Aberdeen, a side we put out in the Europa League before as well. Before that, though, it was a little bit more of a mixed bag. But we're at the stage now where the English sides are just dominant. So probably the last 16 for the next couple of years, the limit for Barry Town and for TNS in the Europa Conference. And for us, it's a big push now. We've got to try and get further. And Lazio is probably our best chance in a while. So we'll find out if we can do that in the next episode. But in the meantime, let's go and get into our big game. It's the SPFL Trust Trophy final. Three years in a row we haven't won it. I want revenge. Let's go and preview the game. So here we go. Dunfermline of the Scottish Championship. A side relegated from the SPL last year. But they were in there for three years before. Their star striker is better than any of ours in terms of rating from the reports. Ours are best rated at three star. His three and a half, Aidan Morrison. He's a Scottish international too. Let's have a look at the manager, Stephen Crawford. He is a pretty class act, so we're going to struggle against him. Their captain, Llewellyn Griffiths, is a Welshman. He's a very good midfielder at 28 years of age. Their vice captain is a Scottish winger who's pretty solid and electric quick. And their hot prospect, not great to be honest. Let's go and have a look at their squad to see who their other stars are. So Simon Bowen is injured, but he might be fit enough to come back. And he's a Welsh international too. They've also got Carl Wilson out with a knock, who's nowhere near as good, but a very quick winger. And I think the problem they've got at the moment, just having a look at their squad, is that some of their stars on loan seem to be cup tied. So Thomas Dix has come from Rangers, but he's already played for their under 23s. And he would easily start in our team. He's basically our missing piece in the centre of midfield. Gokhan has the left back as well. He's come on loan from Rangers too. So they've got a very high quality side, but perhaps the best few players are missing. 
and that might really help us out today. I'm sure they'll put up a good fight. They've got their top scorer, their top assist maker both available. But this is about revenge for us. Three years in a row we've not won it. Kilmarnock, St Johnston, Hamilton all lifted the trophy. We've not even made the final the last two years. And after disappointment and being knocked out against Scottish sides all of those seasons, we've got to make it count today. Bangor City prior to that had won it five years in a row and two years prior to the Port Vale shock as well. Can we get our eighth SPFL Trust Trophy? Can we get our first in four years? Let's go and get through to the lineup and find out. We're going to get the opposition instructions on. I think we're going to leave the lineup as I've done here. I've had a bit of umming and ahhing as we've gone along. But Simancas is going to be between the sticks. Due to injuries to Bektas and Morgan, the fullbacks pick themselves. And then off covering on the left with McDonald on the right. Despite his poor form, I was planning to drop him today. Whitaker and Jennings, the only two fit centre-halves. Mackenzie just coming back on the bench. We've got Lloyd, Reyes, Bulkley and Jones, the midfield diamond. Been a while since we've named one that strong. Bulkley, I think this is his first appearance since that severe tie. He's just recovering from injury. We'll give him an hour or so today. And then Walters and Gordon up front. I've given Gordon a kick up the backside. He's been woeful since he's returned. But Lowe's up, Broadbent, they're sitting there if we need them. And I'm sure they can deliver the goods. It's probably the strongest squad we've named in about a month and a half. So let's see if it can win the trophy. A good side for Dunfermline, but they haven't gambled on Bowen, who is almost back to fitness. They've left him out entirely. Aidan Morrison's there up front, though. Hunt and the likes are electric quick, and Griffiths we saw was very good. So this isn't going to be an easy game, but at our best, we probably win it. Bangor City come out. It's a big crowd. I'm not sure what ground it's being played at. But it will be in Scotland. And into the final we go in the first five minutes. Been incredibly quiet. But we've got a short goal kick with Simancas to Whitaker. Can we get on the counter now? Quite a wide pitch here. Probably doesn't suit our style perfectly. But we've got used to adapting over the years. As Bulkley picks it up in the centre circle. Lovely switch to McDonald. He's due a big game. That through ball is utterly woeful though. Probably not helped by Gordon not making the run. And Slicker can clear it from the goal kick. Only as far as Ruben Reyes though. He picks it up on the right hand side. Has really stepped up when Bulkley's been out injured. And here he is by the byline. Back to McDonald. Cross to the edge of the box. Bulkley knocks it down. Nenov gives it back to him. Makes the run on the left. But it switched to McDonald again. Can he get the assist? Can he get back in the form book? It drops for Jones. Back to Bulkley. Just wide on the near post. Cracking start. Good move. But no shot on target yet. We've still got a bit of work to do here. As we've got a goal kick again with Simancas. Over 25 minutes gone now. We've not really seen a lot of play here. Not sure if we've even had a shot on target yet. As Reyes picks it up in that deep sort of midfield position. Lays it up to Tom Jones, the number 10, who plays in Bulkley. Wide to McDonald again, who's been heavily involved so far. Looks like he's back in form today. Delivers that one in towards Tom Jones. And cleared by his namesake at centre-half for Dunfermline. It's away to Harvey Lloyd, who gives it to Whitaker. Reyes keeps them camped in. They're not getting out of their half here. Bulkley to Walters to Gordon. A little bit of a safe option there to go back to Lloyd. And it's out to Nenov on the left. Plays a 1-2 with Bulkley. Can we find that cross? Can we find that killer instinct? It's back to Lloyd 35 yards out. Short to Reyes to Tom Jones. Touch to Reyes again to McDonald to Gordon. It's lovely football. It's intricate. But have we got the through ball? We have at last. And it's the two men who have been much maligned in recent weeks. McDonald with a through ball, Lloyd Gordon with a finish off the underside of the bar. And maybe just in time for the European quarter final, they're keeping themselves back in form and in the team. As they've got a throw on the right, our visitors done firmly. I say visitors, they're far closer to home than we are. As Singh chips it up towards Jennings, who clears away. Cleared by Bulkley as far as Walters. Now can we turn on the style, get quick counter-attacking goals. Walters goes all the way to the box, beats his man, cuts it back for Tom Jones. He is a superstar. When we needed a hero against Cardiff Met Uni, Tom Jones delivered. When we need a hero against Dunfermline, here he is again. He is an absolute legend. He's playing out of his skin. He's one league player of the year last season and he's flying still. And I really hope he breaks that record in his save because he's still, despite all of Bulkley's quality, probably been my favourite player in this save. Let's get through the dressing room. We're going to tell the lads to prove a point. No complacency will creep in here. But we are 45 minutes from regaining the trophy. And I know it's not my favourite anymore because it's not sponsored by Tunnock's Caramel Wave. But we don't get that delicious thumbnail anymore. But it's still a big game. As Morrison delivers a free kick. Great goalkeeping from Simancas. Came out and took everything. The ball slid through everyone he needed to. 
and the distribution's not bad either. Walters knocks it down for Goulding. Takes on his man. Gets into the box. Can he cut it back? There's two in there. One of them's Tom Jones. And this time he's shot straight a slick up. Does really well to hold it given the pace on the ball. It's another throw on the right though. The pressure is relentless. McDonald gets it from Reyes. Plays a 1-2 with him. Ruben Reyes to the byline. Crosses in towards Bulkley. He's just beaten to it. Harvey Lloyd can go right again. Instead lays it off to Whitaker, the centre-half. Picking their opportunity here. McDonald to the byline on the right. Cross is blocked. Had a much better game today, I've got to say. Delivers another one for Bulkley there. What's it disallowed for? Offside, it says. Who was offside? Oh, we don't get the commentary in the end to see. But with 25 minutes to go, I'm going to give Bulkley a rest because we mentioned it's his first game back. Geffen Davis on for him. We got any other youngsters on the bench? I don't think we really have, to be honest. So I'll leave it another five for now. Right, just over 15 left. Reyes will be replaced. He put in a big shift in Seville. He's going to come off for Srom. And then in a holding role, Lloyd's get a yellow. We don't want any histrionics. We don't want any drama. So Henry McWilliams on. Doesn't get many appearances this season, but played in Scotland for Aberdeen. He knows the country well. And I'm sure he'll help us see out the game. We've restricted Dunfermline to next to nothing. No shots on target. Just a couple of crosses and counter-attacks, really. And we should have scored more than the two we've got. As Ludemis from the sub to Davis. Into Tom Jones. Got a man over on the right again in McDonald. Had a great game here. He's absolutely knackered. Cuts it back to Strom again. And here's McDonald. Can someone find the cross? Strom's got it right side of the box. Cuts inside. Goes himself. Just wide of the far post. It was a really good effort, actually. We're into three minutes of stoppage time any second now. As McWilliams gets it from Kai McDonald. Please keep the clean sheet and keep it comfortable. Long ball forward finds Goulding. Chips it up to Walters. It's delightful football. It was direct, but it was really effective. And as we go into stoppage time, it looks really, really composed here. As we've got 30 seconds left with Jennings on the ball. Clearance from the throw and only found him. Nenoff picks it up on the left to Strom. And now Tom Jones beats the sliding challenge. Delivered into McDonald. Excellent football. And it's hit the post. The second one's off the line. It was nearly an own goal. But Kai McDonald, they must have heard me. McDonald and Gordon have been brilliant today. Nenoff throws it in on the left to Walters. Delivers into the front post. Romanis heads away to Davis. McWilliams the sub. Back to Jennings. The full-time whistle goes. It is a fully comfortable and comprehensive victory. It should have been more, but there was no threat at any stage of that game. And after three years away from the beautiful trophy, we will be lifting... The SPFL Trust, let's just call it the Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Cup. It was the best name, it is the best trophy, and Bangor City have their name back on it. Roberto Simancas lifts it, a first time in four years for that one, and probably the first time since Simancas joined, I think. So he'll get to lift a new trophy, but that was just a little warm-up, wasn't it? Because the rest of the week is where this save really develops. We've got to do the job for Welsh football. And we want to make history for ourselves. Let's go and have a look at the schedule for when we're next going to be back. But I think you all know by now. History is made and it will be a quadruple if we can wrap up the Welsh Cup as well. Maybe it can be even more famous than that. We might even have to sacrifice the Welsh Cup yet so we can go further in Europe. We don't know if we'll reach the semi-final. But that, if we go and have a look at the schedule, is exactly when we're next going to be back. We are facing Lazio in the quarter-final. A side that we've got a pretty good head-to-head -head record against. If I show you the past meetings, we got two draws against them in the Champions League previously. And we actually got through above them in that campaign because of other results. But they're a side that we are capable of getting past. Of course, we'll gloss over the fact that in those games before, Ewan McKinnon scored two of the three. Christopher Broom got sent off in one of them. So you could argue the players that have left give us a better and a worse chance of getting through. But we're going to be back for that. We've got a couple of games in the meantime. We'll keep a very close eye on Barrytown United. Of course, they're still in the Welsh Cup. So that could be their route into the Europa League just yet. But if they come up against us in the final, it's going to be a very difficult test for them. If you did enjoy this episode, though, our first SPFL Trust Trophy win in four years, please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know what you thought of the youth intake. Of course, probably not that useful for us, but we're at the stage in the save where we need to be unselfish. We need to help these players through to develop and hopefully get them on to some of the top six clubs in the country. If we can do that, hopefully they'll continue to develop. They've made great strides in Europe this year. And if we have a look at the coefficient on the way out, it looks like we're possibly going to sneak 12th again this year. We're not far off it at the moment. 
We need to win the quarterfinal to do so. But if we do that from 35.8 points, I feel like we can possibly overtake Denmark. If you want to stick around and find out massive episodes to end the week in Europe, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. We'll also be back with our new mini-series on Saturday and Sunday this week too. And there's live streams over on my Twitch channel up in the eye above, as well as much, much more which you can find up there. But a big thank you for watching your support as always. It is greatly appreciated. We're winners of the SPFL Trust Trophy final. And now we turn our attentions back to Europe. I'll see you next time. Find out if we can break new ground.